What's up with it, y'all? Hey! It's your boy Brian <laughs> King and Brittany. So we back with another one. Yes, we are. I started this thing last week uh, where we started talking about being good enough. You know, I had to bring wifey in on it. You know what I'm saying? We here. And so, man, we have we coming with this one called. It's, we're still talking about being good enough. Yes. But in order for you to know that you are good enough, you have to know who you are. Yes. So the question is, who are we? Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? Who are we? Who are me to judge? <laughs> but yeah, so we have to know who and whose we are yes. to know that we are good enough. Now, I know for myself, I grew up finding or trying to find my identity in everything around me. So mm -hmm. I used to try to find my identity in those things. Like, you know, if I didn't have, you know, a big old chain and diamond earrings, then I was nothing. Or if I didn't have the ladies fine and all over me, I was nothing. That if I didn't have the money, the cars, the clothes, the bomb wife, amen. Hey, shout out. God no, bless you. Just, let's, let's, we got to keep it real. Like I said, I used to find my, try to find my identity in those things. Okay, for me, it was, I used to try to find my identity um, in, at first, anything outside the church, okay? <laughs> because I was a bona fide church nerd girl, okay? In fact, being drugged to church was fun for me. As so she kid. was a drug addict. Uh, on Jesus. Um, yeah. But no, I loved going to church. I had no problem going to church. If we were going to three services, on a Sunday, I thought that was a hype day. Um, and then on top of that, what I like to do in my spare time if I wasn't going to church was read books, do crossword puzzles, word searches. <laughs> I was such a nerd. I was such a nerd. And so, and for me, at first, it was me trying to find my identity outside of anything that had to do with church. So I literally went to college and said I was from North Memphis. North. Ain't a bit of hood in her body. Ain't a hood in her body. Wasn't even allowed to hang out on the North End of Kokomo. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, I was from North Memphis. And in fact, I got corrected a lot because I used to say North Memphis. Um, that's how not yeah. hood she was. And so oh. I used to try to like find myself in that. I wanted to be that hood ride or die chick, right? And so then when I did get saved, and I really, not just getting saved, but I started living out that salvation, I started trying to find my identity in blending in with what everybody else had going on um, in the church. And so I had always had the gift of prayer and I don't say that in a pious boisterous way because I'm sure that there are many of you out there that could probably pray a million times better than me. Amen. All for the glory of God. But I didn't want to operate in the gifts that God had given me because it always put me in front of people. And so I would try to blend in um, with that. So I would just go off in the corner and uh, two-step by myself behind a wall or something. Or or um, when it came to praying, I would do my, my best not to be heard. That's how I tried to find my identity. I started she trying to churchy, so I tried she... to hang around the popular people in church yeah. and blend in the background of them. And I was the opposite of that. So like I said, I tried to find my identity in the things that made people popular popular in the world. So I went through life just searching and trying to do things to validate myself and try to feel good about myself. Yeah, and so today um, we really want to dive in and talk about how we transition from that state into finding out who God wanted us to be and not just finding our identity in God, but being comfortable in that and being at peace in that and not comparing who God called us to be in comparison to what he called somebody else to be. Not comparing our journey and growth to somebody else's journey and growth. Like our pastor now tells us, this is not a this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And so as you go and you grow in your relationship with God, just like we've grown in our relationship with each other, the way that we communicated and dealt with each other on June the 30th, 2011, when we left from the church and went to BW3s and got wings. Some box and wings and went to the hotel room. Listen, it's not how we communicate today. How we dealt with each other and even the, the dynamic dynamics of our relationship during that season is not the same dynamic of our relationship now. And that's the same way even with God. And so, um, Brian, you go first. What was the biggest challenge in 
being comfortable in your identity. Okay, I'm gonna say it like this. When I was in school, I tried to find my identity in being with a girl. Okay. Or vice versa, girls try to find our identity in being with a man or with a boy, whatever. They try to say that, you know, I'm nothing or I'm not this if I don't have a boyfriend because it's always that peer pressure. What society tells us where we need to put our time and effort and if yes. you don't have this and you don't have this, then you're a nobody. Yes. So my thing is when in, in what it started with as a child, when, like I said, when you used to see stuff on TV and you used to watch and this and that, and then you used to see these romantic, oh, this got a boy, I got a boyfriend, I got a girlfriend, yeah. da, da, da. for girls it was fairy tales. They look for fairy tales. For men, we wanted to be the players that they were showing on TV, that they were had in music. Nobody they wanted, wanted to, to be the prince want, charming. You know, nobody really wanted, I don't, I don't know what man, young man or man growing up Wanted to be Prince Charming. Like, Disney played us. Yeah, Disney played us. They had us out here trying to be princesses to find yeah. a Prince Charming. And meanwhile, they was over here trying to be, what was the dude's name from Players Club? The owner? Oh, I can't remember <laughs> that dude's name. Anyway. I can't. Anyway. <laughs> We were trying to conquer. Us young men be out here trying to conquer. So we be like, if I slept with this girl, I slept with this girl, I did this, I did. And it was always a notch under the belt. <laughs> And it still goes on today for young people. Yeah. But when you, again, when you don't know who you are, young man, young woman, you try to adapt to what the world says is okay. You try to adapt to what the world is saying is acceptable. When you really find out who you are, you start to understand and you start to look at life and look at things different. So when I was a kid, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Come on, man of God. But when I became a man I started thinking like a man and I don't I really don't believe that a lot of people really talk about this for young people because you know we were so quick to want to have sex and do this and do that and do all of these things because that's what we felt like yes. our value in everything in life was about but when yes. it when you when it comes down to it when it comes down to you end up hurt now you looking back like man was it really worth it man was it really worth it because honestly we were in our 20s Still having that early child, 20s. early twenties, still like early or like <laughs> I was what twenty two, and I you was were twenty three. So we were still having that child mentality of I need somebody in order to feel like some, or I need to be with somebody in order to feel validation or to feel loved. And we were still dealing with identity issues, even though at this point, at we're that married. point in our walk, we're married. At that point in the walk, we're still trying to figure out who are who we are in God. Because honestly, I, I can speak for me. I don't feel like I had the form formal training to understand that I need a relationship with God. I need to know who God has called me to be. I need to know what God says about me before I'm able and to be equipped to be a husband, to be a leader, to be yeah. anything in life. Amen. You know, we can search for our identity in our careers, playing football, all of this stuff, but none of that stuff amounts to a hill of beans if you don't know who God says you are. If you don't know what God has called you, you just live in a, a, a false identity. Yeah, God may call you a football player, but for what reason? Why are you going to be a football player? Why are you in music? Amen. Why are you a CEO? Why are you singing? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it goes that deep. And a lot of people may not understand, but if you cannot identify with God and what God said about you and God said who you are, then you're going to be looking for these false, these masks. You're going to be putting on masks because if anything ever happened to your career, you're going to think your go. life is over. If anything ever happens yes. to your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife, you're going to think life is over. Man. You know what I'm saying? But God is the only thing and, and everything that God has said about us is the only thing that will surpass our life. That's eternity. Yes. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So we have to get to the place of like, hey, what does the word say about us? And my favorite scripture, what our scripture is for BKS3, as some of y'all may know, but some of y'all may not know, it is 1 Peter 2.9. Amen. It says you are a chosen people. 
a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Yes. As a result, you can show the others the goodness of God. Amen. For he called you out of darkness, darkness into, into his marvelous, marvelous light. Yes. So, I, and, and even breaking that down, he's talking about you are chosen people. That mean he chose, like he specifically, like somebody used to, somebody told me even growing up, I, I always told him I felt like an outcast. I always felt like I was like the runt of the litter. You know, even though I was the firstborn out of my siblings, yes. I just felt like I was the outcast. Like I was not really, you know, loved or, you know, just, just all of these things that the enemy tried to lie to me about. Mm -hmm. He said, you are chosen, chosen. That means he specifically picked you. It wasn't no random lottery. He'd be like, oh, okay. Now that's like, you know, now that's mine. You know what I'm saying? Or, oh, I choose you out of this lottery. No, he specifically chose you. Then he said, then it goes into, it says you are a royal priest. Do you know what priest means? Teach us, man of God. No, I'm asking you if you know what <laughs> priest means. <laughs> yes! A priest is... Um, yeah. A priest in those days are something that we would now consider um, a pastor. Um, preacher, a teacher, um, somebody who can explain and expound upon the word of God. Um, and the man of the cloth, the person of the cloth. Of the man of the cloth. So, person of the cloth. But then he called you royal. He put royal before priest. It was not just, oh, you're a priest. He said you're royal. So when you're royal, that means you have value. And if he called you a priest, that means he's called you a servant of him, of God himself. Like he called you to do a work. And so that that's what I take it. And not just preaching the word, not just giving somebody, anointing somebody, putting your hands on them. You can be a priest playing football. You can be a priest singing a song. You can be a priest rapping. You can be a priest in your work field, in the area in which you work. That means you're called to do a work of God, the work of God. No matter where you are. Not just a work. So so it doesn't have to, you don't have to be in a suit and in a tie pulpit. in a pulpit in order to be called and used by God. So when we look up what priest is, you got it? A priest is required to act as a mediator, a go-between. He is one, he or she, because we know that God poured out his spirit upon all flesh. He or she is one who represents the divine being of God to those around him. And in return from them to their God. And also goes basically, so it's a person who represents God to people. And then in return, as those people come to them, they then go to God on their behalf. So they pray for them. They intercede for them. They're the light in the midst of darkness. They are the salt of the earth, okay? And he, he or she acts as an ambassador, a chosen vehicle through whom Yahweh God has chosen to serve, mm, not lord over, <laughs> not control, but to serve the people and represent him, God, on his behalf. So it doesn't talk about anybody specifically being in one area. So like I said, you can be a priest wherever you're at. Yes. For you young people who are in school, some of you are called to be to be priest, to be a person who represents God to others. Yes. And go to God for others. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it does not matter who, where you start at in life, where you've been, what you're going through. God wants you to know that you are his. He chose you. He wants you. Yes. You're royalty. And he's called you to do a work. Yes. And then we're going to go back to the scripture because we're not finished. A holy nation. From my understanding of what holy is, I thought holy meant you had to be perfect. Like you couldn't mess up. You couldn't do any wrong. But the understanding that I got from what holy is, it means set aside. Like I said earlier, I mentioned earlier, somebody told me that God had set me over here. Here's everybody over here. God took me and set me here. He set me aside. He set me aside to be holy, to be used by him. He chose me. It, it goes all the way back to being chose. It goes back to the word before of being a royal priest to do a work, to be a mediator. Yes. To be a mediator, standing between the go to God on your behalf, or to 
express and show you who God is. Yes. You got something to add on to that, Ben? Yes, and holy is just means means like um, Brian was saying, it's sacred and set apart for God's you. That's what holy is. Holy is a saying. Holy is not <laughs> saying that you are going to be perfect, that you will never make a mistake. That you. And, it, and first of all, we know that we are born in sin and we're shaping in iniquity. Because don't get it twisted. And I'm our not. righteousness is as filthy rags. So it isn't a matter of being good enough. It isn't a matter of hey. being so right and so perfect that God says now you're holy. It's about being so submitted and so committed, excuse me, committed to God that even that even when you get it wrong, you are humble enough to go to God and repent and make it right with him and then make it right with the people that you got it wrong with. You can admit it. And that, and like that, like this is like, <laughs> so we've been quoting this scripture so much. Like this has been my scripture for so long. Years. Years. All, like, all 10 years. Like all of our 10 years of our marriage. But even just the revelation of getting this, like God is continuing consistently showing you that he's choosing you because right after holy nation after that means he set you aside so I'm gonna go back to chosen and he keep that the first word in that is chosen people you're picked you're picked then it goes to royal priest so that means you now you're king you're 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 royalty you have value and the priest again is chosen set aside to do something for the work of God, for the glorification of God, then it goes into holy. Holy means set aside. Set aside, it means you're chosen again. So if you've never That's felt, man, if you've never felt picked, if you've never felt good enough, if you've always felt overlooked, remember 1 Peter 2 and 9 because God is consistently telling you, son, daughter, I chose you. Chosen. Son, daughter, you are called. Royal. You are royal. Holy. You are holy. Then, then it goes into God's very own <laughs> possession. In some translations, it's a special possession. I like the special possession because, you know, I just don't want to be owned by something or owned by. But you you see me as special. You chose me out of out of anybody, out of all the people in the world. Because all, cause truth be told, we were all born. Like my wife said the other day, we were having a conversation about this. Yeah. We were all born children of God. But everybody's not going to accept that. And not going to walk in that. And it's not going to walk in that. Yeah. Many are called, but few are chosen. <laughs> You, we have been chosen. Then it says, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God. That goes back to priests. That goes back to being a mediator. That goes back to representing God in the proper way. You have people who misrepresent God, who represent God in a disrespectful way. Yes. So, you know, people make mistakes, people get wrong, and they have the opportunity to get it right. We're all human. We all fall, we all fall short of the glory of God. So we all have to be able to come back and ask for, for repentance and get it right. But but the fact is that each thing, each like this scripture just goes back to show that every time you were chosen, you're chosen. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. You're good enough. He didn't say you had to be right. He didn't choose me because Brian had it together. Brian was a hot mess and Brian is still a hot mess today. I may be better than where I was at, but I still deal with things. We, we all still deal with things. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I talk to people. I see people. We all deal with something. But now I know how to handle a lot of the things that I deal with now. You know what I'm saying? So I was not perfect. When God said, I called you to do a work. When, when, I was not perfect when he said, Brian, I chose you. I was not perfect when he said, you're a royal priest. I was not perfect when he said, you're a holy nation. I was not perfect when he said, God's, when he said that you are my own, my very own possession. I was not perfect when he said, now as a result of me choosing you, you can go show others my goodness, my love, my mercy, my yes. grace. Yes. The accept he adopted us. He made us his children. We're heirs. We're heirs. It's all through the word. Enjoy heirs with Christ. Not perfect. Hot mess. Toe up from the flow up. Never would have thought that I'd be sitting here. I, my wife knows that I hate saying preaching, being preachy, you know what I'm saying? Let alone doing Christian hip hop, music that glorifies God. I mean, yeah, you can label it as Christian hip hop, but I, I'm an artist. I love doing music. You know what I'm saying? But I would have never thought 
I thought I was going to be like some of the people that I looked up to. And I still admire these people because I like their hustle. I thought I was going to be like Diddy. I thought I was going to be like Master P. I thought I was going to be like Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? These are people that that I draw inspiration from just because I'm a I'm an artist and I am an entrepreneur. I love doing these things in life. I love being creative. I want to be a businessman. But God right now is calling me to do something more important than being a businessman. He's calling me to be a holy man. Huh? You know what I'm Come saying? On. Holy man. Holy man from the fourth floor. Because I was the hustle man. I was always hustling. But God has called me to do something and he's going to fulfill every promise that he made to me. He's going to fulfill every promise that he made to my wife. Because of everything that God has ever said about you. It has to happen. It it's is happening, happening right now. now. It's happening right now. It's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening now. Shout out that quote. Is from Prophet yes, Darrell Lamont Kenner. You yes, know it what I'm is. Saying? I don't want to get none confused. Yeah, that ain't ours. But it ain't ours. We thank God He gave it to him. Yeah, it, glory, because that has sustained me for the most part. Because, like I said, even now I, I still deal with stuff. I still deal with not feeling good enough. But I have to constantly remind myself: What did God say about me? Who did God call me? Because like I said, you have to know who you are in order to know that you're good enough. You can't walk around here and think you're good enough and you have no idea where you come from. And then you also can't think that you're good enough based on the circumstances in life and where you are right now. Because you have to be grounded in something that's deeper than a career, that's deeper than a relationship with somebody, that is deeper than money, Amen. that is deeper than status. Wow, wow. Because listen, if you want if you want to find out who you really are and if you want to find out what you're really made of those things are not shown in times of triumph those things are shown in times of tragedy when you are left with nothing and seemingly nobody but God that's when you find out that's when the core of who you are that's character that's integrity that's the core of who you are because who can't be happy and be nice to people when your bank account is on full, Mom. your car is full of gas, all of your children are healthy, you got both of your parents doing well. You got all a PS5. Your, listen, all of your siblings are good, you, you've gotten your degree, you get the job on the first interview, you get the house that you wanted, the price you needed. Who can't treat people good then? But what happens with that life and chance that happens to us all, that's talked about in Ecclesiastes, happens to us? Good, what happens or indifferent. What happens when it happens to you? That's why I, we're telling you this is a growth process. What we're talking about and what you see today is after years of reminding ourselves and still reminding ourselves today, now. Today. Today. This is after years of prayer, years of fasting, many tears cried, many times feeling defeated, many times wanting to give up, many times doubting that God really chose us because the circumstances that we were looking at didn't line up with what the world told us or even sometimes preachers told us in this whole name it and claim it mess what it would look like when God chose you. See, God did say, and, I, and, 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 and people take the word, God did say, speak those things that are not as though they were. Yes. But you got, it, it, it had to do with what God's will is. If God called you royalty, you have no choice but to speak. You may not feel like royalty, but you got to wake up every day. I'm royalty. If God said that I am the head and not the tail, you have to wake up no matter whether you feel it or not, understanding that you are the head and, and not, not the, the tail. tail. And not just limited to a car. Yeah. Oh, don't I'm just go to a car lot. Like, oh, God said I'm going to have a Maserati. Yeah. And now you living the rest of your life. In God dancing and shouting and being devoted because you believe in God for this Maserati in this house. If that's the only reason why you're in a relationship with God, you've missed it. You, you might as well go on, go on somewhere else because once you gonna, when you don't get the Maserati, or you're going to say God failed? Nah, bro, you failed because your will is not lined up with his will. It's not naming and claiming like they, like they a lot of people say. You can name and claim a lot of stuff. But if God didn't give it to you, if it doesn't line up with the will of God, yeah. and that, that's a whole nother thing. But my, the yeah. major part of that is God called you. God chose you. God said he loved you. He, I, he said, I sent my only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's Amen. John 3.16. He loved you. Loved you. He loved you. He loved you because the thing that I love about that scripture, there's another scripture that says, while we were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. God is not waiting on you to get to this place of cleaning yourself up because you can't. God is not waiting for you to reach some level of, well, when I achieve these goals, then I'll know I'm chosen. When I achieve this stuff, then I'll know that I'm God good enough. Loves me. When, when I get past this hurt, when I get past this, we can't do any of it on our own. That's why when Christ came, he died on the cross and he rose on the third day and he ascended back into the heavens and he sat on the right hand of the Father. He did not leave us comfortless. He sent us the Holy Spirit to keep us. That's the only way we can get through any of this. Yep. We have to have God as, as the head. We have to accept Jesus Christ as the son. And we have to open ourselves up to the filling of the Holy Spirit to keep us. It is a package deal. So when you log off of this video and you're like, oh, that was a good word and that was nice. And the enemy immediately begins to give you, begins to give you thoughts of yeah. feeling worthless, of feeling suicidal, Anxiety. of feeling as if life it could never get better from, for you, feeling like you came from the wrong family, feeling like God gave you the wrong parents, he gave you the wrong schools, he gave you the wrong friends. When, when, when those, thoughts, those thoughts start to come, and I'm sorry to say, but they just might. And for some of you, you already know because you've been battling that already. Remember 1 Peter 2 and 9. That's the only way that we can get past those moments because it's just that it's a moment. And the only reason why the enemy will continue to place doubts and place things in your, in your mind to think about where you come from is because he knows he can do nothing about where you're going. That's all he has. All he has is, is to bring you a distorted view of your past. But if we start looking at our past and start seeing that despite where we came from, God kept us. Despite the parents that he gave us, that we didn't lose our minds. And despite whatever we have going on right now, we still have air in our lungs. Despite whatever might be going on, we have the mobility of our bodies. We have the ability to hear, see, and we have the, another opportunity above all else to accept God more and to believe his word more now in this moment. Those thoughts will have to fade. The Bible tells us to resist the enemy and he'll flee from you. And the only way that we can resist him is by reminding ourselves of what the word says. And what does the Bible say? It says, but you are not like those other people, those people who doubt God, those people who don't know about him yet. Those people who don't know that they are chosen yet. You now have been told that you're chosen. And because you have been told, you are a, royal, a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result of all of that, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then it goes on even to 10. We've got to put this in there. Yes. Once you had no identity. Who am I? I'm a child of God. Point blank period. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you receive no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Yes. Somebody God's mercy that. is for you every day. We just want y'all to know that. We're going we gonna to go deeper into this thing of being good enough. This is, again, just the beginning. We're building a foundation. You got to know who you are. You got to know where you really came from. Yes. And once you know that, we can start building. You got to have a, a foundation. Firm foundation. A firm foundation. Not something that's just wobbly like, oh, if I, if I, like, yeah, if I ain't got this, I'm nothing. Once it's gone, then what? At the end of the day, no matter what happens, and I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to go deeper into it because my husband knows me. I don't, no matter where you are, how much money you have, no matter what happens in this election, no matter what your skin complexion is, no matter what denomination you come from, no matter what side of the tracks you were raised on, no matter if you got a four-year college degree, a community college degree, or a birth certificate. <laughs> or a PhD from the streets. <laughs> yes. At the end of the day, you have to remember that who God has called you and what he says is all that matters. Because heaven and earth will pass away as we know it before the new heaven and the new earth come. And the only way that we are going to know that we're going to live to live again in eternity with God 
is that we have to constantly remind ourselves who we are and live in a way who we are that reflects and honors that. You royalty, baby. You chose it, girl. You feel me? Lift your chin up. Wipe them tears. Fix that crown. You know how you get a whooping and you start, I don't like it. You got to just sniff it up. Just suck it all in. You feel me? Yes. But man, with that said, again, you know who it is. You know what it is. We love y'all. We pray for y'all. Yes. We pray that you all experience that relationship with God. We all experience yes. that you are good enough. Yes. So Father God, right now, we thank you for every person that has watched this video. We thank you for their life. We thank you that they know that they matter. We thank you that they now know and they will believe with every ounce of their being that they are chosen, that they are royal, that they are holy, that they are called. God, we thank you that you are clearing their mind from that fog of doubt and anxiety and worry. Yes, and you're renewing in them the faith, the hope, and the joy of being a child of yours. God, we thank you that you are enveloping them with a love and a peace that surpasses all understanding and joy unspeakable and that is full of your glory. Yes, God. And we thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name. Hey, Mizzle. Hey, Mizzle. Love y'all. Love y'all. See y'all on the next one.